If you are a power platform maker, then you're going to want to know what's coming up that is going to make your experience easy. And I've got you covered here in under 10 minutes. Let's take a look at the Wave 1 2023 release. And I'm going to go through this in sections rather than ranked, although I do have a favorite thing that I'm saving until the end. Let's start with power apps. And there are great things here for both model and canvas app makers. First up, virtual tables. Now, virtual tables are where you've got data in another source that you want to use in your model driven app, but you don't want to build an integration or duplicate or bring those across. So I get people all the time asking, can I build my model driven app on SharePoint? No, you can't. Model driven apps are built on Microsoft Dataverse. However, if you've already got a SharePoint list, let's say you've got your asset list in SharePoint and you've got other people in your organization using that and you don't want to move it and you don't want to have to build an integration, now, what we're going to do is say you can make that a virtual table. You'll be able to use the low code maker experience. So you previously could do this, but it was tricky and you needed to bring in someone who knew what they were doing with the high code end of things. Now, just as a maker, you'll be able to connect up to that SharePoint table and have it become part of your model driven app without having to move it. I am really excited about this one. I did say I wasn't going to do this in order, but honestly, this is pretty much number one at number one here. And I'll definitely be doing a video on this when I get a chance to get my hands on it. So make sure you subscribed if you are interested in learning more about that. Next up, we have the ability to add table columns to forms and views in your model driven app automatically. So imagine this scenario. I built my model driven app. I come back and I've realized that I need to add another couple of columns to one of my tables. Now I have to go back into my form and drag and drop and add it in. I have to go back to my view and drag and drop and add it in. And if you've got multiple forms and multiple views, that gets pretty tedious. You have to remember to put it everywhere. This is going to be a feature that's going to, it's going to change our lives really if you're a model driven app maker. Don't say that lightly. There'll be a button that you'll be able to use to just update automatically. Again, watch this space. I'll definitely be showing you how that one works when it's coming through. And if you're a Canvas apps maker, then you will be familiar with the fact that we have got these responsive containers in Canvas apps. So that allows you to build a Canvas app that is fully responsive to whatever is going on with the device that the user is using bit fiddly at the moment to have to do that. So in this release wave, that maker experience is going to be made easier as well with drag and drop components to make that whole thing a whole lot easier. So happy makers in the Power Apps world, I can tell you that. On the Power Pages side, we have got a really cool feature here with Power Pages and Power Automate becoming something that is going to work together. Now this one is a high code scenario, but you will be able to use these two things together to trigger a cloud flow, Power Automate flow out of something that happens on that portal. So if a user doing something in the portal can trigger without them knowing it, obviously an action that can go into your other data sources at the back end. So that's going to give you a lot more flexibility with what's going on with those portals. Moving through into the main section here on Power Automate, a couple of really cool things coming here. First up is sequential approvals. And approvals are one of the things that I love using so much. This kind of goes across Teams and Power Automate. I trigger them out of my model driven apps all the time. So seeing an enhancement to approvals is gonna be amazing. This will allow you to do sequential approvals. So the idea is here, you can define multiple levels or stages in that approval and assign who next needs to approve something it will go on to that next stage and if it's rejected at any level or stage then it's considered rejected and we're also going to be able to see the history of what's gone on with that so you'll see here an example of that approvals app sitting in teams with power automate behind the scene where we are requiring that in that sequential order so that's going to give us a heap more that we can do with those things and this is cool. I'm going to have to have a play with this one too. Use native integration for flows in Excel. So obviously Excel is something that you can use as a data source for Power Automate, but in the world of all the Microsoft things coming together and working seamlessly together, this is going to be run directly from within Excel. Now, I know I talk about model driven apps a lot. Excel is honestly still the biggest used business system. I still see organizations using Excel all the time for all sorts of database type things. So bringing Power Automate in there, making it more accessible and helping people launch off into this wonderful world of business applications is something that might be 
good for many people. <laughs> Power Virtual Agents creating chatbots here. We saw late last year some of the new preview of some of the new maker experience. So some of those things are now starting to become generally available. And the one that I'm most excited about here is the ability to use Power FX in the authoring canvas. So as you're building out your chatbot, being able to put formulas, and this is where if you haven't already invested time in learning that Power FX language, you're getting across it, it's popping up everywhere. It's the heart of Canvas apps. It's here, it's starting to pop up in model-driven apps as well. So that investment of time is going to be worth it. Plus, you can use ChatGPT to help you craft those formulas. So you don't necessarily have to be an expert, but get your head around what PowerFX is doing. So you'll be able to use that inside your canvas for building out those bots, which means you've got a heap more flexibility. It just opens up a stack of new things that you'll be able to do. Now, I haven't talked about AI Builder for a while, but there's a really cool feature in here that I want to make sure that you're aware of, which is around being able to retrain documents using a feedback loop. And this is something that hasn't been there before, but I think this is going to really kind of change the game here because AI Builder has always been a thing where it's pretty much you get what you get, you don't get upset. It's a low code model. You use your stuff and off it goes. But this is now going to be a element that's going to be in there that will allow you to improve your model over time by giving it feedback and going through a feedback loop um, and then see the documents that weren't processed correctly, tag it, give it some feedback. So you're actually able to train that model inside AI Builder, which is a that's actually kind of a big deal. I know I've got it at number eight here, but it is a big deal. The release notes do also say additional scenarios like text processing and object detection are also supported. So I'm hoping, if I'm not reading too much into it, that this is meaning we're starting to get within AI Builder the ability to give feedback and train the models in there, which previously was only available if you went much deeper into the Azure AI side of things. So that's awesome. Dataverse, last but certainly not least, in fact, not quite last, because remember, I do still have one that I've saved here for the end. This is something we're going to be able to do in the data model, and I'm interested to hear how you think you might use this one. Associate activities with other activities. So activity records in Dataverse are things like emails, appointments, tasks, calls, Teams chats, and so on. We've always been able to attach this to business records, this contact, this account, and so on, but you couldn't associate an activity to another activity, and that is now going to be possible. So the release notes suggest a use case here like associating a Teams chat activity to to a task activity or an appointment activity. So I think those things like tasks and appointments where you do want to bring other bits of information in, I can see that you might want to associate an email with a task. So those kinds of things are going to be possible and this one's going to be fun to explore. And last, my favorite word in the whole of the release notes this year, enjoy this feature here. Enjoy the new look and feel for model-driven power apps. This is going to be using a thing called Fluent UI. Fluent UI is used across all sorts of Microsoft services to create really beautiful looking screens. And we're getting the love for that now in model-driven apps as well. So expect to see a really great uplift in the look and feel of model-driven apps. And I'm hoping also, therefore, what we can create inside those model-driven apps. Make sure you're subscribed and check out my model-driven apps playlist for more on all of these things as they come through.